Hello everybody, today we are going to make lard biscuits. That's right folks, it's not made with love, it's made with lard. Buttermilk, flour, baking powder, salt, and lard. That's right, that's uh, just the rendered fat, refined fat from a pig. So go ahead and start by preheating your oven to 450. That's right, 450 degrees. To start off with, I'm gonna sift three cups of flour. I don't think you have to sift this, but it just does seem to make everything a little bit finer, and if there's any clumps, uh, that will get rid of those. I'll say serious bakers measure their flour by, uh, by weight, by the gram. I'm not a serious baker, so we're just gonna use three cups. Then we're going to put one cup of baking powder, not baking soda, but baking powder that has everything in it to make the biscuits rise. And I guess you could uh, call a biscuit a uh, quick bread since, you know, there's no uh, yeast rising, but it will rise a little bit anyway. Then we're going to put one teaspoon, not tablespoon, but teaspoon of salt. Now the magic ingredient. We want one third cup of lard. Ew, just sounds nasty, but it actually makes everything taste delicious. So this needs to be in the refrigerator for uh, several hours to make it nice and cold. Um, it is cold, it is very firm, kind of a pain to work with, to be honest. So I just try to pack that into a third measuring cup best I could to get an accurate measurement of it. I don't think it was accurate, but either way, these things turned out absolutely insanely good. So lard is nothing but the refined fat of uh, pigs. If you're familiar with uh, beef tallow, you see a lot of cooks and chefs on Instagram and Facebook using uh, Wagyu beef tallow. Well, that is refined from uh, cattle, and much the same way uh, beef is refined from, or uh, Lard is refined from pigs. It's been around for hundreds of years. It's nothing new. And if you're concerned, um, lard has 39 saturated fat, uh, or 39 grams of saturated fat. Butter has 43 grams of saturated fat. So looking at the numbers, doesn't seem that bad. It's still not something I'm going to use on an everyday basis. But either way. We dumped in our buttermilk and we're gonna to start to crush our lard into the flour. You're really supposed to cut the lard into the flour before adding any buttermilk. Oops, I'm new at this. It still turned out amazing. I did not add enough buttermilk. So all together, I needed about a cup and a half. So you're just gonna to have to feel for that. You want a wet dough, but this cutting in of the buttermilk is essential you don't want to stir it you can use one of those uh pastry cutters to much uh the way that uh pie crust dough is made um or you can just use a big fork and it, it does take a little bit of muscle uh this was not the easiest thing to stir so now that's about what it should look like and i'm just eyeballing this to be perfectly honest i'm just going to pour a little bit more in and stir it and I know you want a wet dough that is absolutely for sure if you don't want to use lard you could also use uh, shortening such as Crisco in researching for this video I found that some bakers actually refer to vegetable shortening and lard all as shortening and that's because it shortens the gluten fibers in the dough it has something to do with adding a fatty molecule. The chemistry of it is way beyond the scope of this uh, channel, but thought that was just an interesting fact that some people call lard shortening as well. Um, either way, next step, go ahead and uh, flour your surface and go ahead and scoop it out. Now, this is a wet dough and we don't want to work it too much or it will make the biscuits tough. So the less you knead this, the less you mess with it, the better. 
So um, this is <laughs> a very horrible way to do this. Um, I am not a professional baker by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, in this video I just tried to roll it around and pat it out on my cutting board. The second time I made this, I put everything on parchment paper and I was able to use the parchment paper to just roll it out by uh, lifting the sides together and that worked out a thousand times better. So next I get a board scraper and uh, that, that seemed to work pretty well. So I'm just going to reflower my board here and uh, just sort of pat out the dough. I guess it would be maybe an inch, inch and a quarter uh, thick here. So again, I don't want to roll this. I don't want to work it too much. Just sort of pat it down. Now when I tasted this for the first time cooking it, I was instantly drawn back 30 years, 35 years to uh, my grandmother's kitchen table where she made these and uh, I, I cannot tell you how good these biscuits are. They're not diet biscuits by any stretch of the imagination, but they were just insanely good. Now I'm just using a glass to cut them out with. Um, I can tell you my execution of the presentation of these biscuits were definitely not good. Uh, these are kind of ugly to be honest, but the taste was out of this world. So I made six of these. I probably could have made uh, the rest of the dough into another two, maybe another three. Um, but the last one I just sort of patted together. It was ugly. But you know what? It tasted exactly the same. Absolutely insanely good. I do hope you guys try these. Um, <laughs> I would not do this if you're watching your calories, but they are. I cannot tell you how good these things are. Now you want to cook these, bake them at 450 degrees for about 15 minutes, and enjoy. Enjoy. 